Well, um, we are here right now with Edie Bogart. We're in Montague, Michigan. And this is Tanya Kabbalah, and the videographer is Oscar Ospo. Uh, we're conducting the interview for the White Lake Environmental History Project, and just want to check with Edie to see that she's read the legal release and, and signed that. Yes, I have. Well, thank you very much. And just to get started, if you could tell a little bit about you know, where you were born, some of your family details, have you lived here? Um, um, all your life, or just a little bit about your, your background. I was the last of six children born to Elsie and August Lehman, and I was the only one born in the hospital, which was in Shelby, Michigan, rather than where we lived outside of Montague, Michigan. I've lived here most of my life, except during the years when I went away to college, and my husband and I had lived elsewhere. Um, that's... And then we, we came back here permanently in 1973. Do you have family in the area? I certainly do. I, my parents have, are deceased. Three of my siblings are deceased, but I have a brother and a sister all, that still live in the area. And we just uh, interviewed your brother, Frank, who lives yes. down the road from you. Yes. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about your, any of your earliest memories of White Lake? you have them? I, my earliest memories are mainly of just being on the farm um, and going to school in Montague. Uh, I never went to swim in White Lake. It was beautiful. We drove by it, but I didn't have any uh, real deep connection with the lake itself until later when there was concern about pollution. Okay. Um, what was the community like when you were growing up? Do you remember that? I remember it as being a very loving community, a very warm-hearted community, uh, all-white community, and there's a little bit of an interesting story about that. But uh, the farm community was very um, hard-working, honest people. Do you... Um do you remember some of your first thoughts when you first heard of Hooker Chemical and maybe DuPont coming to town? My earliest recollection would be of Hooker because my, my father, August Lehman, was township supervisor at the time when Hooker courted the community because they wanted to uh, build a facility here. My father thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to improve the economics of the community, it would give a, a strong, stronger tax base, and it would give employment. And at that time, the agrarian community was starting to become smaller, and the the rural community was becoming smaller, and was becoming more of a bedroom community outside of Muskegon. And so we thought this would be a good way to grow the community. What kind of things did Hooker Chemical do to court the community? I was pretty young at the time, so that's hard for me to answer. I do remember vaguely my father meeting with them. It seems like some, from somebody from the, the organization or the, the organization is what I want to call them, but somebody from the, the Hooker Chemical, it seems like they were even at the house at one time, but that might be a childhood vague recollection. But I do remember my father being courted by Hooker and him feeling it was a positive thing. Do you, um, you know, did you see anything changing in the community as when the companies came to the area? It was a very positive uh, thing for the community because it helped the tax base of White River Township, which it's located in, mm -hmm. and uh, everything was, was really fine at that time. There was no awareness of any um, pollution taking place. I don't think we become suspect to it until Love Canal became a real issue. Well, and actually, um, and I'm wondering if maybe you're thinking about DuPont, because DuPont is in mm -hmm. White River Township. Exactly, yes. Okay. Oh, you're right about that. Um, mm -hmm. what, um, what did you first hear about the pollution problem, and how did that make you feel? Unfortunately, I hate to admit this, but 
It didn't have a large impact on me. Um, I was busy raising children at the time and working full-time at the hospital. It was my husband that was more concerned about the issue of the pollution. And he was concerned about it for the, for the children as well as the community and um, took, took part in some of the... the um, some of the protests? The protests, yes. Well, can you tell us a little bit about your husband? My husband was an activist, and wherever he saw uh, a need or a, a problem, he would tackle it full force. Um, it wasn't just the matter of the chemical plants. It was also a matter of, um, at the time, there was a war going on in El Salvador and Nicaragua, and the children were being left homeless and orphaned, and there were terrible atrocities. And I don't totally understand the connection we had with it, but my husband did, so he uh, went out and pursued um, vigorously bringing that to the forefront of people's uh, sensitivities. And let's see, so that was... Yeah, there were. I could go on with yeah. many stories, and I won't do that because it takes too much time. <laughs> well, what kind of things did your husband do uh, related to the pollution? Other than did he um, did he go to meetings and protests? Yes, I believe he did. He definitely participated. The major protests that I remember is he took our daughter, and it was the one where they. Um, blockaded the road to not allow trucks to come in bringing pollution from other sites. And this, I believe, is after they built the vault yeah. to put their own contamination in. And uh, I don't recall one of the, the real pivotal points in combating pollution was when someone, and I don't remember who it was, flew over and took pictures of the barrels of pollution that were being stockpiled in the back of the Hooker property. I can't even remember or recall what it was that was put back there, but it was something of evidently they weren't supposed to be producing at the Hooker chemical plant. Do you, um, do you remember hearing anything about the, the whistleblower, Warren Dobson? I did not know him, but my husband, I'm sure, did. Yeah. Did your husband work with Wint Dahlstrom and Bob Wesley at all? Yes. Yes, he was a very close friend of, of Bob Wesley. Uh, what, um, what was your understanding of the pollution problem? Or did you, did you have an understanding of the, what was going on? Yes, I think I became much more aware of it when I started reading more and more about what was happening to the people that lived around Love Canal. And I, I certainly supported my husband wholeheartedly, even though I didn't participate in any of the demonstrations, because, um, well, I had the I walked the fine line with my own family because my brother worked for the chemical plants, and I wish to inject something here that the community was very provincial and naive, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I actually mean it in a very admirable way. They couldn't believe Hooker wouldn't would could possibly do something under undercover and behind people's back that were going to destroy the the beauty and and pollute the community. So they believed everything that Hooker fed them, which we later found out were a lot of them were lies. And uh, but the community was of the old mindset where when you shook hands on something, a handshake was a binding contract. And uh, they I don't think the the community, many in the community could possibly believe that Hooker would do something undermined. And of course we all know they did. Do you think, um, do you think attitudes in the community have changed at all? It's, there's been enough time that has passed that I think it's been kind of, a lot of it has been just not thought about. But I think the community as a whole has rallied in wanting to clean up this area because they now rely so much on tourism rather than chemical plants, which no longer exist. And it's very, very um, 
important for the community now to make sure it's a clean environment. And uh, yes, I think they really have turned around in that respect. How, how do you think the, the, the pollution problems affected the White Lake area as far as its image or you know, things like that? I think enough time has passed that the image is not up in everybody's face anymore. And so I think it's probably a community that's, that's looked very well on. I, I, think it's, um, I think it's a community that is gaining respect because they're working so hard to clean it up. Um, way back in the day, I remember when they had to put well, um, city water out to Blueberry Ridge because their wells were contaminated. And the area around where, I, now I'm not sure if it's around DuPont's village or Loop, the discharge into White Lake, uh, nothing could grow there, uh, both floral or fauna. Um, it, it, was, it was a hard, it was hard work to clean up White Lake because they not only had to clean up from the chemical plants, but they had to clean up from the tannery also. And um, it's been a long haul, but I think it's being very successful. What did you think, um, you and your husband think of the companies that were eventually found responsible for the pollution? They had to be held accountable for it. They had to participate in the cleanup. There was just no way about it, especially the ones that particularly lied to the community. Now there were some issues which were just uh, the fault of the times. For example, the, the tannery and the tanning of heights. Uh, I don't think anybody really had any idea, including the company itself, that they were really going to be destroying as much as they did. And ignorance is not always forgiving. You, you know, you can't always forgive ignorance. You can only forgive it up to a point, and then when they become aware of what they're doing to a community, then they have to step up to the bar and say, oh, this is what's going on. Maybe we better make some changes. And um, it's be But it's basically been up to the community to bring about those changes rather than the companies themselves being forced into it. Now, you knew, you know, people who worked at these places. Was there... Were there ever any conflicts, or um, was it hard to, you know, kind of navigate the that issue? The conflict over Hooker, I think, particularly, became almost violent, because the the local paper that tried so hard to present the facts to the community to make us realize what was going on, the editor of that pa uh, paper was threatened. Um, it became very confrontational and because the people that worked at Hooker didn't see anything wrong with what Hooker was doing because um, I think they refused to believe that the plant could possibly do anything underhanded. Why, um, why do you think uh, your husband had a different viewpoint? I think my husband's viewpoint was different because he was born in Chicago he, we lived, even when we were married, lived um, different places in the United States. And he was much more aware of the dishonesty that can occur in these companies that want to make their millions of dollars off the back of the local areas. And so he was much more aware of the possibility that things were not what they appeared on the surface. So when, when concerns were raised, it was easier for him to believe them. Correct. But he also liked to investigate. He loved to investigate things. So I'm sure he was really in on a lot of the investigation. In fact, I, I don't know if he ever saw the barrels himself because it seems like he tried to sneak in to, uh, to see for himself what was going on. And I know he saw the aerial photos, and, and I don't recall who did those. Do you, do you think that if there were other companies, possibly chemical companies, in, coming into the area, there would be a, a different approach taken? Oh, I do believe that. I do believe that. I don't think the community would disallow something coming in, but I think they would do a whole lot of research first. 
um, this part of West Michigan, and it's not even just the White Lake area, but this whole part of Western Michigan from Muskegon up through our area is, has been noted for having all kinds of pollution problems. I mean, there's other companies that had come into this area too because they saw, oh, this area is going to let us come in and, and do our jobs and we'll offer work and we'll give them a good wage and we'll tell them all this stuff and we can make our profits right here and set up business. So it wasn't just Hooker and, and DuPont and, um, I'm trying to remember the third one. The Tannery. Well, the Tannery, but that was that was here for a long time. That that goes back to when we used to rely on tan goods. No, the, there was another one out, Ott Chemical. That was it. Well, Muskegon Chemical. Muskegon Chemical. And, and Ott Chemicals in North Muskegon. Okay. What, um... You know, what changes do you see for the White Lake area in the future? I see very positive changes. I think the community will never allow the wool to be pulled over their eyes, so to speak, an old expression. I think they're going to um, be much more aware from now on of what is good for the community. And do you, um, what do you think is the community's greatest need in, in, relating, in relation to environmental protection? just to stay aware and not let anything happen any longer that we, we are, can't be held accountable. Do you have anything you would like to add that I didn't ask you? Just that this is a wonderful community. It's a beautiful community with beautiful people in a beautiful environment and I'm very happy that people are, are wanting to protect it and preserve it and keep it well for our for posterity. Well thank you very much. Welcome. <laughs>